Okay. I'm uh, my name's Blair. When I was growing up, what treaty meant to me was, you know, during the powwow, you know, go and get her five dollars and oh yes, you know, five dollars treaty money. And then I kind of, you know, I grew up and I started kind of hearing the word treaty a lot more and I kind of started thinking, well, what is, what is treaty? What is treaty number seven? What are, you know, what is this that we celebrate, that we, that we honor? So whether it's an agreement or a promise, what kinds of examples do you have of, of treaties that we make every day in our lives? In every relationship, like with friends, there's, there's, although it's not spoken about a lot, there's, there's always an unspoken contract. Um, like for example, Nancy's my friend, and then we have an unspoken contract that we've never actually talked about, right? Whereas if I hit Nancy or punch her in the face, <laughs> we're not going to be friends anymore and we're going to go our separate ways, right? I work with kids and so we make, we make treaties. We write out our own treaties of agreements between like the, like the teachers and the students and like, you know, basic rules like no bullying and like be honest and care for each other. Um, but it's good to be able to pull that out and um, feel like, are we following these rules and what we just call it a treaty. I think that the power of writing something down and creating like a written agreement and a written contract per se is that it's supposed to lend a certain degree of accountability and responsibility to both parties, right? And then you have this piece of paper that you, although it can be ripped and it can be torn, it's a sort of like your... Uh, it's your intention made manifest. And yet, at the same time, you know, when I signed my wedding certificate or marriage certificate, that it's kind of obvious that we don't just always go back to it and sort of say, hey, like we signed this and you wrote this and you need to do this. There's also the spirit of the agreement that we, there is a relationship there that we uh, are making our intentions to continue to strengthen and sustain. A lot of us are students and we want to get our degrees, um, but on the other side, it becomes more maybe complicated when uh, one side has more power and they can rewrite the rules or change the rules. Um, and in that way, it's kind of it's an unfair advantage or an unfair agreement in that way, I think. Mm -hmm. I think one of the benefits of written agreements and the institutions that enforce them is, is it, it does allow strangers to be able to make agreements without knowing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you think of like, I don't know, like PayPal or eBay, it's, it's kind of amazing. You can like do all these things and you're just like, you have no idea who these people are. Yeah. The drawback to it is that it takes the personal out of the equation. So all of a sudden, like the um, relationship is not a part of the agreement anymore. It's taken out of it. I think it's important to remind, to be reminded that the land sustains us. So, in a Hiawewin, in a Nihio version of the world, Askik uh, Daskinan, it's the land that, it's our land, the land that belongs to us, the, that we belong to the land. And so when we're talking about treaty, we're really talking about kinship. We're talking about those relationships that we have, not only with each other, but with the land itself and the way that it's written on our bodies and in our bones and in our blood. And that kinship extends um, beyond just people. It extends to, to our kin that are fish and plants. We are exploring other communities, cultures that are foreign, foreign to me that I, I don't know and, and I feel a little bit hesitant. We're going to be meeting with elders, like how do I approach, how do I talk with elders? Uh, am I going to make a mistake? I probably will make a mistake. So there's all these kind of internal fears as a, as a non-Indigenous person m going into uh, a place that is different. And like I'm half Blackfoot. I mean, I grew up in the city and I mean, going to my own reserve, it, it kind of feels like like it's not my home and it is a strange place so I kind of feel the same as you like you and I share some of the same feelings is really just going not with the attention of like oh I don't want to disrespect you or ooh, you know like all these 
like I need to put these people on a pedestal? Is this going there with the intention of just, I'm going to be me and I'm going to be polite and I'm going to be respectful? You know, when I step off Blackfoot territory, I'm not on my own homeland. And, you know, I'm stepping into somebody else's house. So I have to sort of observe their uh, protocols, their ways of life.